I remember there was this really, really good quote about people pleasers. It said, when you're a people pleaser, everyone loves you but yourself. And that quote actually hit for me. When you're putting other people's needs before yours, you almost run out of time to actually get to those things that matter for yourself. And that's the whole reason why it becomes draining. And as more time goes on, you realize you start loving yourself less. Hello, my name is Chance and you're listening to A Chance to Strive. I just want to say thank you. Um, our last episode did really good. Like the episode 10, we did like an hour premiere. Honestly, even when I did it midway through, I was like, I don't really think we're going to hit an hour. And then at one point I realized, oh, you're like, we're pushing really close. And I still had mad content that I could have gone through. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time. And we did the hour premiere. And to be honest, for my first 10 episodes, I've been extremely proud of the turnout that this podcast have had. Um, not even like because of the things I've came on here to speak about or anything like that, but or not even the rankings that I've also touched on the last episode, but the idea that so many of you guys are listening to this and you guys actually care. You guys are so supportive. It means a lot to y'all. Like, that's all I ever wanted this podcast to be about. And just to have listeners that are coming on every single week where it's like, OK, what is it? What are we listening to today? It's like. Just the fact that you guys really just are showing support no matter what it is that I'm speaking on. And, of course, I try to bring you guys topics that are enlightening enough for you guys to actually tune in. But, yeah, I just wanted to say I really appreciate that. If you're listening from anywhere, please listen. The downloads means a lot to this podcast, so please do that for me. And if you guys haven't checked out the YouTube yet, I mean, let's be completely honest. It's pretty dope at times. Like, you feel me? It's very entertaining. I feel like a lot of the times we do the Q&As, like, you see live reactions and stuff like that instead of just being able to hear the tone of my voice. I think that definitely makes up for it. But, yeah, even if you don't, even if you prefer to listen to it, I'm not going to say nothing against that because at times I do prefer to listen to things as well. But at least, you know, hit that subscribe button. I want to hit 10K. Honestly, I feel like I can hit 10K by the time summer hit, comes around. So we're going to see if we can try to do that. We have, like, four months. I, I believe in it. All right, so let's get into this week's episode. Um, this week's episode is people pleasers, and then we say selfless or lack of self worth. And I think if anybody's a people pleaser, you definitely have an under- have an idea of what it is that I'm getting at when I say selfless or lack of self worth. Because I feel like a lot of the times I I myself am a people pleaser, so I definitely have an under. I kind of understand where I'm coming from when I say these things because this is almost like doing a podcast on yourself. But um, I remember at a certain point, you know, like while I was trying to still learn how to love myself and everything like that, I would try to do everything just to be accepted by people. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like I was even being myself. I just felt like I wanted to be accepted. I needed people's approval. So I think like the very bad part about being a people pleaser is you kind of like you start thinking being a nice person means you always have to say yes to everything. And that becomes a very toxic thing because... I remember for me, it became really toxic because I always had so much that I had to offer to the people around me. And every single time they even suggested they might even want my help. I was I was there. I was saying yes. I was saying yes to every little thing. And the thing I realized about that is it, it gets draining. Like when people are constantly when people constantly have access to you, even though like they don't. Feel, it's not even that they're being a bad person. It's more about the fact that you don't understand how to set boundaries. And. Do you understand how tiring it is to constantly be there for people when you're not focused on like like rejuvenating that energy that you're constantly dispensing at people's needs? And you have to realize the fact that not everything is your fault. Like I remember, I know I used to take so much, like it's, it's always like I tried to play hero in a comic book story where like I felt the whole entire world was at my disposal in terms of like having to care about everyone and everything that they deal with. Like, bro, like sometimes everybody's going through the motions as well. And you just have to let people rock on their own flow. And that's the one thing that I couldn't do. Like, I always felt the need to save someone. And to be completely honest, the reason why I felt that way was because that's where I found my self-worth. I felt I felt like this sense of like I, I actually loved myself more when I seen myself in a position where people needed me, where I was doing things for people, making people smile, making them happy. But at a certain point, you start caring about that too much where you don't actually care for what it is that you need or how to benefit your ple- or how to benefit yourself. And all you're really doing is just people, you're becoming somebody's pet, like puppet. Everything they need, you do it. 
and it gets really fucking tiring and you don't understand like just how much that shit just aggravated me at a certain point and i was just like fuck you know and before we actually get into anything deeper um i found this article on psychologytoday.com it's by amy morin and it's called 10 signs you're a people pleaser and the one thing that I really liked about this and the reason why I'm going to bring it down to you guys, we're going to go through all 10 of them. And the thing she does, which is great, she kind of tells you like the little traits that might make you a people pleaser. And then she also shows the red flags in it and why you probably shouldn't constantly do that thing. Okay, the very first thing that she put on her list was she was like, you pretend to agree with everyone. And when you're listening to somebody's opinion and you disagree with them, there's n- nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with even staying quiet about it but when you constantly feel the need to like make people feel like you are on the same page as them or you agree with them i think that right there becomes an issue because you're literally not even standing up for the things that you believe in like there's nothing wrong with giving your own opinion even if it goes against somebody at the end of the day i feel like a lot of the times i've been so grateful for a lot of my friendships It's been because like those people haven't always agreed with me or we haven't always been on the same page. I don't know about I don't know about certain people, but the one thing I really love about certain friends is this idea that they have a lot to bring to the table. And by that, I don't mean like anything materialistic, but more about their ideas, their thoughts, the way they have the way they have a certain outlook on things that is completely different than mine. Like when you're having conversations with somebody like that, it's very enlightening. You know, it's like knowing that I can learn something from someone. is probably like not even like in a physical manner, but it's probably like one of the most attractive things about somebody that I, I feel like. Like, you don't want to see how hard it is to find anybody that that has, like, some type of substance or, like, an original identity. Like, where you're like, oh, this this is who you are and you're capable of displaying that without trying to constantly be liked by people. But, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I used to I used to be the exact same way. It's like I would I would literally like we prevent myself from being able to um, give my opinion on certain things. The moment I knew it was going to probably it was probably going to make me stand out from everybody in the room. Because I think when you're a people pleaser, you're not really focused on standing out too much. The whole point of like trying to please everyone is the fact that you want to be liked by everybody. So you don't want to be put above by everyone, even though you might end up being like the popular person or the popular kid. At the end of the day, you don't want to seem different. Even if you do stand out, you're probably stand out for being the best of that group, not because you're that different from it. Um, another trait from people pleasers, the idea that you feel responsible for how other people feel. And me being an empath, um, if you know what an empath means, it pretty much means, like, it's easy for you to, like, be able to catch on somebody's emotions and stuff like that and pick up on their feelings. The one thing I'll say about that, for especially for me, is because it was so easy for me to pick up on people's emotions, it was hard for me to ignore it. And I did feel a sense of responsibility for their emotions, not even because I'm the one that affected them, because for the most part, I mean, I wouldn't be the moment I see somebody sad. I felt like it was my job to kind of make them happy just because I felt like I was capable of helping. Like I could provide that type of help. The moment that I felt like I could in my head, I interpreted it as I needed to. Like if I don't do this for this person, I will look at myself and think I'm a bad person because I ignored somebody that needed something. But at times, the one thing that I didn't realize was at times you have to be selfish for yourself. There are certain times people will need certain things from you and you're going to have to look at yourself and ask yourself, like, is this something that I can do or is there something or do I have a bigger obligation to myself to do something else? Like at that moment, the not every moment that I see somebody sad, I should constantly just be worried about everything that they're doing. Because it's like, what if I'm not in the what if I'm not in the right place to be there for that person? Then what? then I feel like a terrible person for picking myself. If I constantly feel a need to be there for other people, why should I feel guilty the few times that I actually dedicate that time to myself? And that's the reason why I even titled this episode selflessness, selfless or lack of self-worth or a lack of self-love. Because if you feel like you can, you should be doing everything for other people, then why is there such an issue when you're actually picking yourself over those same people that you're constantly there for and it's not even like you're picking yourself more than you pick them but they the moment you're not there for somebody or you can't be there for them you're scared and i think a lot of it goes into the whole being like thing you know if you deny you if you know if you say no to somebody 
it's an issue And that is one of the flaws as well That she put at number five The idea that you can't say no to somebody Even if you didn't want to do something for them Just because you feel like you may not be liked You choose to sit back and just say yes And you at times you hope that people will notice The fact that you don't want to do something But unless they make that realization themselves You're not going to be the one that actually speaks up for yourselves And that's actually one of the things that I used to struggle with The idea of speaking up for myself but then I think I just got, I used to get kind of tired, especially in high school. I got kind of tired that people will constantly tell me about myself. And I'm like, I'm, I'm working on my ass, you know, trying to better myself. And just to have people like point out flaws in me that in my opinion, I didn't even have pissed me off. And then one of my teachers, I think her name was um Miss, damn, I don't remember her name. No, no, I do. I do. Miss Hughes. Yes, she was in my high school. Uh, she was in my high school at Tech Boston. And I remember she gave me one piece of advice that stuck with me that always, honestly, it, ref- it made me, like, not take anything, like, not be so sensitive to people's opinions. She pretty much just told me, like, when somebody gives you feedback or when somebody's telling you about yourself, you know yourself better than anyone. Whatever you don't believe is useful from what they're saying or whatever you think is false or it's not true. Push it to the side. Don't let it bother you. You know it's not part of you. And anything they say that can possibly be useful to you, be honest with yourself and listen to it and admit to it. But I think the reason why, like, that made me not, it made me not internalize so many things because I used to be so scared of, like, when people said certain things about me because I'm like, I'm not that. I felt the need to constantly prove people wrong. But then at a certain point, I realized when you get to a point where you're at peace with yourself and we're at peace with where you are, not that you're being complacent, or anything like that but at a certain point you stop giving a fuck about making sure everybody knows the real you like it should be a blessing for somebody to get to know the real you and at a certain point I hated anybody thinking anything of me that wasn't true but then now I would a certain point you realize how tiring it is and you'll never be able to control the narrative somebody's always gonna think think of you the certain thing you're going to have different roles to play in people's lives. Sometimes you're going to be the person they fell in love with. Sometimes you're going to be the person they appreciate. And sadly, at times, you're not going to stop yourself from being the villain in somebody's book. It's their story. They're the ones writing it. However you want to come out, whatever you want to be seen as, at times that part doesn't fucking matter, to be completely honest. Um, another part <laughs> for people pleasers, um, you feel uncomfortable if somebody is angry at you. I'm not going to hold you. It is impossible for me to deal with somebody being mad at me. Like, you don't understand how quick I'm going to try to make it up to you, make it up to you, make it up to you. And then I realized that times, like, you have to give somebody the space to just be mad. Like, you have to give them the space to just express how they're feeling. As terrible as it is that you feel for getting them mad in the first place, you have to be understanding of the fact that the person needs space and time to express their emotions and shit like that. Um... Number eight, this probably was something that I had to learn a lot of. Uh, you need praise to feel good. In other words, you constantly like being validated by somebody saying, being appreciative of you. So in other words, a lot of the reasons why you'll say uh, you'll try to do a lot of things for people is because you want them to acknowledge all the good that they do for you. Like, oh, my God, thank you so much. You're always there for me. I really appreciate shit like that. So a lot of the times you you want that validation so bad. So that's the reason why you're willing to do almost anything. It's kind of like your self worth, your self um your self worth rests entirely on what other people think about you, and you feel good when people shower you with compliments and shit like that. Um. Oh, another one is like you you dodge conflict. Like conflict is not something you're good at handling, at all. Like you avoid it at all costs. Meaning like you'll struggle to stand up for the things that you actually believe in. And to people And that used to be me But I got tired of that shit real quick bro Like not being able to stand up against other people Or like the idea that I have to like Be less of what I actually am Just to avoid a conflict And especially in a lot of my friendships I'll be like scared Of losing them But then I would realize it's like If I keep on trying to avoid conflict then whatever bond it is that I have with that person will never fucking grow. When you have conflicts with people, when you argue with certain people, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you go about it the proper way. It only becomes toxic when two people are incapable of communicating in a way that's actually helpful and 
beneficial to both parties. For me, it's like, I don't really feel like there's much value in a friendship if there's if the if we haven't overcame anything. Like if we've just been perfect all the way through, yeah, it means like we probably don't talk every single day, but every time we talk, we're chilling and it's a good vibe. But I feel like those bonds, like from like childhood friends, where you guys would argue twenty four seven, you guys are constantly fighting. I feel like in a friendship like that, there's so much value because that person has seen you at your worst. They've seen when you've gotten angry. They've seen like that ugly side of your personality. And they still choose to stick through it all with you. Like, I feel like to me, that type of friendship displays that a level of unconditional love that you have to be very grateful of. And especially in this generation, because it's like a lot of people are quick to judge you. And a lot of people are quick to move away from you when they get to see the real you, when they see all the baggage that comes with you. But when you come across a certain person, whether it's in a relationship or a friendship, where that person sees all the good things about you, right? All the little rainbows, you know, like butterflies and everything like that, all that bullshit. And then they get to see that dark side of you. They get to see those characteristics that are flaws that you're currently trying to work on. They see those things that you haven't even figured out at times. And they're still choosing to, you know what? I want to be there for you. Like, I'm still trying to make sure that I'm there for that person. Like, and the thing is, like, the rawness in it is the part that I also love. It's like, that person will call you to fuck out on your bullshit. That's the whole reason why you guys argue. That's the reason why I'll get heated. It's almost like, like, yeah, they'll go against, like, they'll go against you and they'll argue with you. But you know they're doing out of the place of love. Like, that's the only reason why they're dedicating that much energy to this shit in the first place. That's why I always like those mean friends. Like, those friends that are willing to tell you anything. No matter how uncomfortable that shit might make you No matter how much it might piss you off Like they would tell you this shit straight up And not give a single fuck Yes at times that mean friend is a little insensitive But let's be completely honest We're all very grateful for those people That will constantly tell you the truth Because a lot of people like to sugarcoat shit And not even because they're a bad person A lot of people are just really scared of breaking somebody's heart Or like scared of how you'll feel Based off what they said Somebody who doesn't even give a single fuck about that shit Trust me, you need somebody like that around to make sure you can get you, you get the truth out of everything. Okay, I'm going to read a random quote, and I promise you it's going to make sense, but you just have to give me a chance to actually get into the story. I promise I'm going to connect it. This is just a weird storytelling type of method, but I will start off with the quote, and then I'm going to explain the significance towards the end. So this is a quote that came um, from a Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu or something like that. I, I, I apologize if I... Didn't say the name properly, but I didn't know how to say it. Um, it says, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. I know a lot of people have probably already heard that quote or you understand what it means. But I'll explain what it me- could possibly mean for somebody who's a people pleaser. Um, I remember back, this is like a story from like, I, I even wrote my college essay on this. And it's what helped me get into my school and it led to me getting a full tuition scholarship. So it was a pretty dope story. Um, I'm not going to say this girl's name for the purpose of not for the purpose of people that might know the both of us not know who she actually is. Um, we're going to call her Samantha. OK. OK. So pretty much um, I was back back in like I remember I was like 15. No, I wasn't 15. I remember I was like 14 or 13. One of those ages. And then I met this girl. Um, we're calling her Samantha. And she was a really dope person. Um, we didn't even go to the exact same school, which is the part that was really weird. But we met around Facebook. And I remember around that time, a lot of people my age would use Facebook. And I was just, um, we became really dope friends. Um, we would constantly talk day in, day out, every single day. And it wasn't even like a thing about like we started liking each other. Everything was platonic. But she was just an amazing person. And we ended up getting pretty close, constantly talking to each other. And the more we would talk to each other, the closer we would get the more vulnerable we would end up getting with each other. And she would tell me all these things about her life and how she constantly deals with depression. She didn't wants to, she takes care of her sisters. She takes care of her two younger sisters. Her mom's not around much because her mom has, is working two jobs since her household doesn't have both parents. So the mother has to work extra hard to be there for her. So in other words, since she's the oldest one, she kind of ended up having no choice, but to grow up a little faster And I remember that I constantly felt this need to be there for her. And whenever she would tell me she really appreciated me, um, that the idea of like being showered with that compliment, it meant so much to me. 
that I constantly wanted to seek it. It wasn't like I was only doing things to get that out of it. Like generally I wanted to be there for her, but I just understood the fact that it came along with that. So I'll be completely, I'll be honest at the fact that I also dated for the pleasure portion instead of just me being selfless. And everything was great, you know, and at a certain point she did get to that point where she almost, um, you know, went through with that, but I'm, I'm glad that she actually chose to talk to me first. Um, I think the one thing I tried to keep reminding her of was the fact that I know it may be like an easy way out, but you do have two younger sisters that you got to take care of and everything like that. And you have a mother that's struggling her ass off to make sure she's able to do this for you guys. And at a certain point she realized, if, I think a lot of the times like somebody just needs They just need somebody to be an outlet for them to express their emotions. You know, it's not like they need much. They just need someone to show them that they care, care enough to listen, make them feel like they actually matter. You know, and I was always and I always tried to be that person for her. And at a certain point, you know, we like we our paths went two completely different ways. And then towards, I think it was, it was like around my senior year, I ended up, I ended up um, getting in touch with her again, and I admitted to her that, oh hey, I actually wrote my college essay about you and everything like that. And she was like, oh my god, that's so dope, and she would love to read it. And I actually did end up letting her read it at a certain point. But as we spoke a little more, and I asked her about like all those deep things, like how are you doing that? I decided that she told me not much had changed. And I'm not going to lie to you. And this is where it goes back to that exact quote. Being a people pleaser, you constantly want to be needed by people. You constantly want to do things for them. But. And I'm going to write and I'm going to read something that I actually wrote down that exactly goes right along with this. And I was like, I know we love being needed by people, but at one point you should want them to no longer need you. You should want them to get to a position where they can do it themselves. Your sense of self-worth shouldn't derive from being needed by others. Sometimes people love you for you. They don't need you to prove yourself to them. And I realized that a lot of a lot of the times in my life being a people pleaser, I felt like I had to work for somebody's love. But I never made that an expectation for anybody that I did love. The moment I saw how amazing of a person you were, as long as you displayed that loyalty and that consistency to me, that's all it took. There wasn't this constant need to keep up, keep on, like, keep like trying to get it out of me, like keep trying to get that love out of me. And that's what I did for people. I constantly felt like I had to prove myself. And I think that's one of the reasons why I I would say sorry a lot, even if something wasn't my fault, because I'm like, as long as we're on good terms and we're everything is smooth, like that's all I care for. Like I didn't really care for my myself. But when she told me that it hurt. And then I remembered something that my mentor told me. My mentor told me, it's like, I know you find a lot of worth when people need you. But understanding the fact that you coming across somebody that needs you doesn't make you that special. And I never understood what he meant by like, why would I not feel special being able to mean something to somebody? And I think he understood the fact that one day I would realize that the point of somebody coming across and needing your help isn't for you to constantly like for for them for you to become that person where they constantly depend on i think that's the point i'm trying to get across it's like you shouldn't wait for somebody to need you that much at a certain point if they can't help themselves eventually you're not going to be around and the part that you should find a lot of value in is making sure that person is capable of being there for themselves and for the longest point i think i was scared to admit that to myself because I realized, like, yo, if my only, if the only time I feel like I really love myself is when I'm able to be there for people, why would I want to get people to a point where they don't need me, where I no longer feel important? But your lack of self-worth should not only come from other people. It should come from just you. The fact that you need some exterior force to come in, like, so you need somebody else to make you feel important, to make you feel special. That's an issue. It's called self-love because it should only have to do with you. And I think that's the part that I wasn't capable of understanding because I didn't understand what was so great about me for me to really love myself that way. And it wasn't until like I dug deep down, seen all that I 
And I started looking at myself for like all that I offered to people instead of just actually being at their disposal. It was like, I know I can do this for people and I can do that. Like I have so much that I can offer. That's where my self-worth should come from. It shouldn't only, it shouldn't only come from when I'm actually able to benefit other people because then that becomes toxic. It becomes draining. It's hella fucking tiring to always be there for people. Especially when you know those same people are not going to do the same shit for you. And because you're such a people pleaser and you understand how much energy it takes out of you to be there for people, you're not going to ask people for shit. Like, you don't understand. I don't know why I'm so bad at asking people for shit. But then the moment somebody will need something out of me, I will say yes so fucking quick. But I cannot ask people for things. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if it's my brother... A ex A girlfriend At the time Or whatever it was I am incapable Of asking people For favors And that's why I've always made sure I could be that Own person for myself Like I'll even take Breaks from people If I'm not good Just so that The moment I'm around Other people Like the moment They need something Out of me Like I know I'm in a, in a Space to actually Say yes to them And stuff like that But The one thing I'll say Before I end off The episode is If you're a people pleaser Please understand something You shouldn't need to do favors for other people To constantly be at their disposal To find yourself Like that shouldn't be the only way for you to love yourself If you are constantly Looking for other people to praise you With um, approval To give you compliments And that's the only time you feel like you love yourself That's gonna drag you down a path Where you I remember there was this really really good quote About people pleasers It said when you're a people pleaser Everyone loves you. Everyone everyone loves you but yourself. And that quote actually hit for me. Because it's like when you are a people pleaser, yes, you're going to do everything everybody needs out of you. But when you're putting other people's needs before yours, you almost run out of time to actually get to those things that matter for yourself. And that's the whole reason why it becomes draining, becomes tiring. And as that, and as more time goes on, you realize you start loving yourself less. That's why you all call, you constantly need the approval from other people because you know that you're incapable of giving it for yourself. And I just, I'm a person where I don't like the idea that I can't do something for myself or the idea that I need somebody for something. I've always hated it. That's the reason why I've always made sure I could become everything for myself instead of looking for it in somebody else. That's why I really don't believe in the whole, like, I found my other half. If I'm incapable of doing something by myself, I'm going to work on it and I'm going to get to a point where I need, where I can be that person for myself instead of just looking for somebody to fulfill that need for me. I've just never liked the concept of that. But yeah, um, if you're constantly looking for your self-worth and somebody else, it's not going to work. And you're going to find a lot of the happiness that you come across to be very temporary. And you want that shit to last, don't you? Well, I want to say thank you for tuning in to this episode. Um, I'm going to go to class now, which I am 21 minutes late for. Um, yeah, please subscribe if you're on the YouTube channel. If you're listening on any other platform, listen, I'm risking my grade for this. Please <laughs> download the episode. I need it. But I just want to say thank you very much. If you're a people pleaser, trust me, we're on the same page. It's terrible. It's tiring, but it comes from a good place. But I just want you to remember the fact that you should be your number one priority. And don't do something at the expense of your own happiness, at the expense of your own energy. We got to keep that shit sacred, you feel me? All right. Y'all be safe and have an amazing week. See you next week.